What up? What up? What up? Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to seven, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. That was really weird. What is going on, I? What is going on? What up, what up, what up? Hold on just a second. Sorry, man. I'm already having some some stuff this morning. <laughs> Hang on just a second. I think I know what's going on, and I think I can fix it from right here. I hope that is the case. There you go. There we go. You guys there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you guys are there. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Glenn Lundy. Welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. Today is, oh man, it's telling me I got signal issues. Hopefully we can hold. Today is Tuesday. That's right. Today is Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. Can you believe it? Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. And the crazy part is today is the first, the very first and the very last time it'll ever be. First and last time it'll ever be Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. So we want to make sure that we make the absolute most of this incredible, absolutely incredible day. Now, my Wirecast software is now telling me that we have, like, no signal. It's telling me we have no signal. It's telling me it was disconnected. So I need, I'm going to need you guys to throw me some comments. Let me know that you're still getting the stream let me know that everything's coming through because I don't negative sides, let's say, to traveling is as I as I move around the country. Oh, there we go. It looks like I have a full green signal now. As I move around, you know, obviously we got to, now we got to, we get to, we're blessed to be able to do this show every single day. Um, but technology doesn't always help out, doesn't always fall in line. So uh, today it's 71 degrees. That's right. Today is 71 degrees with a high of 83. <laughs> Can you believe that? 71 degrees with a high of 83. And that's because I personally am down south here in Florida. I'm here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is amazing. And that's what's really cool. So we're, ta we're taking the show wherever we go. Sometimes we do the show from Florida. Sometimes we do the show from places like Lufkin, Texas, where I was recently. Sometimes we do the show from New York. We can do the show from wherever. And that's what I love about 2019 and technology is that we can take this show wherever we go. The only time that I can't take the show, the only time I can't do the show with you guys is when I am on a plane, which was the case yesterday morning. But my man and one of my heroes, Mr. Derek McLean, came on yesterday. Mr. Derek McLean came on yesterday and he took my place with last minute. But I didn't I didn't know about this trip until I was I was getting ready to come on it. So I call him, you know, less than twenty four hours before showtime. I'm like, hey Derek, dude, I need you. Can you do my show? Hashtag rise and grind. Can you go live at 530 in the morning in front of thousands of people and do it and do a show for me? And of course, he was like, absolutely. What do we need to do? How do we make it happen? And so Derek McLean, I got to personally thank you, my man, because you did a phenomenal job yesterday. You did a phenomenal job. I love the testimony that you shared, um, you know, of Rise and Grind and what that's done for you in your life. Uh, of course, we're wishing Jill all well wishes. We're praying for Jill. I just know there's a miracle around the corner uh, for Jill. God bless. I just know that I know that it's there. Uh, and so thank you for stepping up in the midst of having to deal with those things with your family, um, you know, in the midst of it being short notice, in the midst of all that, you really stepped in, my man. Now, not only have you and your wife continued to remain positive through this whole entire ordeal, not only have the two of you continued to add value to the hashtag Rise and Grind group through this entire ordeal, like you've managed to lift us up on your shoulders, you've bared the weight and the burden, but yet you've been able to keep it light for us. But not only did you do that, but you also stepper 
delivered. So I absolutely love you for that. Thank you so much for that. I hope you guys enjoyed Derek as much as I did. Um, if you didn't get a chance to catch yesterday's episode, hashtag rise and grind, I suggest that you go back and do so. Now, yesterday while Derek was on the show, he talked about how not all heroes wear capes. And he talked about the heroes in his life and the things that, uh, you know, the heroes in his life, the things that they do. Um, and, and those kinds of things, including his his amazing wife and what a hero that she is to him. So one of those heroes for me, you know, one of those heroes for me is this guy right here. Okay. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. All right, make sure y'all have you up in this school, all right? I'm talking about you. 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 I'm talking now see that that's my man Dr. Eric Thomas. Okay, that's my man Dr. Eric McThomas. Eric Thomas, for those of you that don't know, you can look him up on Google. Eric Thomas is the number one motivational speaker in the world. He's got the most watched YouTube videos. You'll hear the hear his voice in the background on tons of uh, different songs, different motivational videos. You know, you always hear him. He's he talks about when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And I got an opportunity to spend the entire day with him yesterday. That's why we came down here to Fort Lauderdale. So I got to spend the entire day with him yesterday. All of his compassion. He was pouring into um the these african american kids these schools were all african american kids and they were age ranges he was pouring into elementary school students he did some middle school students he did some high school students um and what was credible was not just watching him stand on the stage and share his wisdom and knowledge and pour into these people but it was all the interactions in between that made it really special like really really special and he was actually going to be on the show with me uh, this morning but we are in fort lauderdale we're right on the beach and it is spring break <laughs> and so he sent me a text message uh this morning at about 4 30 saying he hadn't been able to go to sleep yet because the spring breakers above him had been partying all night so he's not going to be joining us this morning physically uh, but he is a, a a topic of discussion because because he truly is a hero that doesn't wear a cape. I mean, it's unbelievable. So we're going to dive into that in a little bit more today. But first, before we do that, before we do that, you know what we got to do. Where's my music? We got to get some music in here. We got to get this thing going. I think, is this the one I want? Yeah, that's the one I want. This is the part of the show. For those of you that know, and those of you that don't know, share button. Because I believe if we could change the way people start their day, we could make a massive impact in the planet, on this planet. I truly believe that. It's also the part of the show where I want you to say good morning to me, and I'm going to say good morning to you. Good morning, Janelle Griego. What's up, Liza Myers Borges? How you doing, Casey Rossiter and Sheila Strack? How you doing, Karen Parrish and Amanda Messer? Mr. Tom DeLolio? What's up, Mike Stevens? Pam Biddle's up in here. How you doing, Charles Camp? Who else we got? Who else we got? Leanne Ryan Smith, how are you? BG Campbell's up in here, and of course my man Josh. Oh, that's the hotel, Josh. Oh, so we don't get anybody in trouble. What's up, Scott Simons? Trendy Trenda? CC Eberly? What's up, Don Sankey? I love it. I love it, man. Everybody's up in here. Anybody whose names don't I recognize? What's up, Laura Berman? What's up, Richard Pintrick? How you doing, Whitney Wells and Eric Burns? Mr. Eric Willeroy, AJ Schultz. How you doing, Dana Fishbeam? Oh, what's up, Archie? Kurt Cahill, Sean Woodward, Christopher Campbell, Naomi Bussinger. I love it. You guys, man, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being a part of my show. Thank you for being here with me today as I travel around. The hashtag rising around the portable as kids and and I, I, it, it's really been an incredible experience just watching him work kind of in between being on uh, the stage. And what's really interesting is I learned a lot about these kids, right? These kids that Eric Thomas is pouring into 
uh, and, and it was really interesting, like 70% of these kids don't have fathers in their homes. 70% don't have fathers in their homes. Like 80% of them, their grandmothers were still, you know, what the, oh my God. Oh my. <laughs> I just realized the music is still going. Sorry about that. Um, but no, it was really interesting following him around, you know. 70% of the students that he was talking to didn't have fathers in the home. 80% of the students that he was talking to, their grandparents, still uh, are still out is, is, are still out working. <laughs> when is that going to stop? Sorry, Tony. My goodness, man, I made a mistake, bro. You guys are, you guys are crazy. Um, you know, and so it's just really interesting learning the dynamics of these children that he's pouring into. And see, Eric has a mission. He has a, his his real passion. His real passion is education. His real passion is teaching. Now, when he first made the video that went viral, that really blew him up, it was a video uh, called The Guru Story, When You Want to Succeed As Bad As You Want to Breathe. And when he first made that video, he was actually at Michigan State. He was in front of a bunch of students. He was teaching. He wasn't standing on a stage speaking. He was in a classroom teaching. And as he was in this classroom teaching, somebody hit the record button and they happened to record the when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe uh, speech that made him incredibly, incredibly famous. And I find that really fascinating. I find it super interesting as we talk about how all he not all heroes wear capes because it's human beings. Actually, I, I, I would venture to say that no heroes wear capes. None of the real ones. It's human beings. Guys like you, gals like you, that are going out there in the world, you're making an impact in people's lives. You're making a difference. You see, sometimes we like to put these, these heroes on pedestals, which I did. You know, I'll be the first to admit, I had, uh, you know, Eric Thomas up on a pedestal. He's always being a person who loves speaking, motivational speaking, so on and so forth. I always put him up on a pedestal. I always thought, okay, this guy right here is not human. He's different or, or better or unique in some way. He can do things that others can't do. But as I've gotten to know him over the last few months and got to really spend a lot of time with him yesterday, I mean, this guy stopped at one point yesterday and did a load of laundry. <laughs> he pulls over the Cadillac Escalade. He pulls up into a laundry place, throws in a, lawn, a load, goes down the street, speaks in the school, goes back and picks up his clothes. Like, he's just like... You and I, he has struggles just like you and I. He has pain points just like you and I. He has, he has uh, development issues, things that places where he wants to be, where he's not, just like you and I. He's no different. But yet he's out there and he's making an impact in the lives of literally millions of people around the world. Not all heroes wear capes. I also want to tell you this morning that not all giants are tall. So that's my little man, Joel Bryant. You know, this weekend, we had a weekend filled with basketball tournaments. Savannah had a basketball tournament. Joel got a basketball tournament. And I got to tell you, man, little man Joel, my little man Joel, last year, you know, he, play, he started playing basketball. I shouldn't call him. If he saw me call him little man on this thing, he would kill me. So I got to take that back. But last year, Joel played basketball, and he couldn't hit the rim. He's not the biggest kid on the court. As a matter of fact, he's typically the smallest kid on the court. And last year, he had, he had, he had a tough time you know, even getting the ball up to the rim to be able to score, um, things like that. But this little guy, this big, giant-hearted kid has worked his buns off. He has literally worked his buns off this last year, practicing as hard as he could, giving it all that he can, playing every single game and every single practice with as much passion. Or became one of the biggest parts 
of the team. He became one of the biggest parts of the team, not just scoring, which he was able to do. As you could see, he's starting before he couldn't even hit the rim for a layup. Now he's making free throws, which is amazing. But he made a massive uh, effort for the team defensively. Which is really interesting. You wouldn't think that the smallest kid on the court would be the, the one that could shut people down. However, in this tournament, which they won, that's right, yes, this tournament, which they won, they took first place this year. In this tournament, they put him on, they had him guard a kid that normally lights everybody up. They had him guard number, number four that normally scores 12, 14 points a game. The kid couldn't score. He didn't score a single point. My son contributed two points to the game, right? But the kid who was guarding couldn't score a single point, and they were able to win the championship. They were able to win the whole thing thanks to the team, an incredible team effort, an incredible coach, and the giant-hearted kid on defense that really made an impact this year. And I share that story because, obviously, it was a powerful weekend for me and for my family. Joel being the giant that he is, not only did he make an impact on the court and in the game, but he made a huge mother-in-law, uh, my sisters, my brother-in-laws, my father-in-law, my wife, my other kids, all of us together in one place, which is rare, all together in one place, sharing this experience, tears coming into our eyes, laughter and emotion as our giant-hearted kid Joel Bryant made such a powerful impact on our weekend. Another incredible part of our weekend was watching Savannah play basketball as well. And something happened in Savannah. <laughs> so, so, so that's Savannah getting an award at the end. And Savannah played her little heart out this year. She didn't, uh, we weren't going to let her necessarily play basketball because she didn't put a whole lot of effort in last year, but she played her little heart out. She really did, and we're, I'm so, so, so proud of Miss Savannah. We're going to continue to work, and she's excited to play next year. But that video that you just saw, that was her getting an award. They, her team took second in the, in, the, in the overall tournament. They took runner-up. They went to the championship game and had the lead through three quarters, but they weren't able to win. But one of the heroes, the true heroes on the court, was this lady. So many smiles on my face. When I first met her, she needed to sit too hard, and now I can't keep her quiet. And she's always... So that's Stacy. Stacy was a first-time coach this year. And man, Stacy gave our kids everything she had. She poured into our kids with so much heart, so much passion, so much fire. And my daughter and all the other members of the team grew in so many ways. But what you just witnessed right there was at the end, Miss Stacy, after they, they had this tough loss and all the kids were upset that they had won the game, Stacy sat them all down. And not only did she talk to them about how proud of them, how proud of them she was, but Stacy had individual certificates and awards for each and every kid individual certificates and awards she put a medal over their neck that told them they can they can achieve whatever it is they want to achieve and she gave them a certificate based on their personality and the achievements that they that they contributed to the team it was absolutely a mind-blowing moment a tear-jerking moment she took the time to put their names on the certs and so my daughter went from disappointed because she lost the game to this Wrong video. <laughs> I mean, look at her face. Hey, I'm the next little fella. Never heard him say two words. I'm still not sure I've ever heard him. <laughs> but she got the award for most likely to do the splits in the middle of a game. <laughs> which is definitely my daughter Savannah. She's a peacock, right? She's a flamingo. She likes to put on a show. She likes to be the center of attention. And schools, not who they were on the court. And she made it so clear that who they were on the court, the results, the fact that they didn't win the game, that didn't define them. But who they were personality-wise, what they contributed to the team, that was what 
the definition of who they were and what they could accomplish. Stacy is one of those heroes that doesn't wear a cape. Stacy is a giant. She was a giant this year, even though she's not that tall. She has a giant heart. And the reason I wanted to share those things with you guys this week is I think it's really important. And as I'm starting to get to know more and more people who have spotlights, I'm getting to share more and more time with, with celebrities and so on and so forth. I'm just starting to, to, to more clearly see that it has nothing to do with the size of your muscles or, or the size of your physique. It has nothing to do with, with, with your position or your, or your talent. It's got absolutely nothing to do with that. And it simply has everything to do with your heart. You see, we're all human. We talked about it in church this weekend. There's this, um, uh, this, this human thing that we have where we tend to in some way. And I'm here to tell you that's not true. It's simply not true. There was a picture I wanted to add. I didn't grab it in time. Another one of my heroes is my stepdad, man. My stepdad, Everett Hull, spent his whole life in Flagstaff, Arizona. He had never, you know, he grew up in the same house, lived in, the, lived in basically the same house his whole life. Met my mom after she had gone through a divorce with my dad, and she already had two kids. He never had any kids. And my stepdad came in, and he loved my mom like I've never seen a human being love another human being. He loved my mom. He served my mom. He loved me and my sister, even though we weren't his kids. He never, when, whenever my mom asked him if he, if he wanted like kids, he would say, I've already got two. I've already got two. And he, he truly taught me what it looks like to be, to be a, a good man to my wife, to treat my wife like a queen. And that same man uprooted everything. Three years ago, him and my mom, they, they, they moved, well, a little over two years ago, and they moved here to Kentucky where they could pour into my children, where they could be a part of our everyday lives. And my stepdad, he, he, he gives the kids head rides. They love grandpa He's at every game. I mean, golly, the guy still works his butt off all week long, but yet he spent the entire weekend, spent the entire weekend watching basketball games with us, pouring into the kids. You know, and it's just, it's incredibly special to me, and it means so much to me, that this man who came into my life at 11 years old has loved me like his own and has loved my mom in such a powerful way. I mean, Everett, Everett is truly my hero. And I don't think I give him enough credit where credit is due. He's not a celebrity, he's not a big shot. Like, I can barely even find pictures of him on my phone because he's just in the background doing the things that have made our family what it is today, that have made me the man that I am today. And so I guess what I want you to know is not all heroes wear capes. Actually, none of them do. You, with your huge heart, with the talents and passions that you currently have, you can go out there and change the world. You can go out there and impact somebody's life. You can go out there today, right now. You can go out there and be the absolute best version of yourself that you can be. You don't need to be an E.T. You don't need to be Superman. You don't need to be Spider-Man. I need you to be Leanne. I need you to be Tom. I need you to be Casey. I need you to be Amy. I need you to be Kiefer. I need you to be the best versions of yourselves that you can possibly be because you see you are a child of God uniquely made by the God of the universe 
And all of these decisions that you make, the, the paths that you cross, the people that you interact with, the, the, the posts that you post on social media, all of those things, they matter. They make an impact on your friends, on your family members, on your coworkers. They've made an impact on me. And I, for one, absolutely love you for it. I do. I absolutely love you. So if nobody's told you that yet today, I want to be the first. I absolutely stinking love you. Hey, do me a favor and have an incredible day today. Have an absolute over-the-top phenomenal day in Orlando. You have to. I'm no longer asking you. It's no longer a request. I'm telling you, I need you to get down here. You're going to be surrounded by heroes. Heroes in all walks of life. Heroes in all different industries. And it's going to make such a powerful impact on your life. I need you to get down here. Period. You got to get down here. It's beautiful down here in Florida. You got to get down here. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And if you need more videos like this, go to glennlundy.com. If you need some Rise and Grind gear, go to glennlundy.com. And then, of course, will you come back here again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. We're going to do it all over again on hashtag Rise and Grind.